In this lesson, we will focus on solving systems of linear equations using the elimination method. We will cover a range of examples, including systems of equations involving fractions, as well as those with infinitely many solutions or no solution. To solve a system of equations with the elimination method, we will add the equations together to eliminate one variable with opposite coefficients. In this example, the y variable has opposite coefficients. In the first equation, its coefficient is positive 3. In the second equation, it is negative 3. When we add these two equations, y will be eliminated because 3y plus negative 3y equals 0. That's why it's called the elimination method. Now, let's add the other terms. 5x plus 2x equals 7x, and 12 plus 9 equals 21. Then, divide both sides of the equation by 7 to isolate x. Cancel out these, and 21 divided by 7 is equal to 3. Now that we have the value of x, the next step is to find the value of y. We can do this by substituting x with 3 into one of the original equations. Let's substitute it into the first equation. 5 times 3 is 15. Then, subtract 15 from both sides of the equation. These cancel out, and 12 minus 15 equals negative 3. Then divide both sides by 3 to isolate y, and you get y equals negative 1. Finally, write your solution as an ordered pair, 3 comma negative 1, with x equal to 3 and y equal to negative 1. If you were to plot the graphs of these two equations, the lines would intersect at a point 3 comma negative 1. We can confirm that this ordered pair is a solution to the system by substituting it into both original equations. Substitute 3 for x and negative 1 for y. In the first equation, 5 times 3 is 15. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and 15 minus 3 is 12. In the second equation, 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, and 6 plus 3 is 9. As you can see, both equations are satisfied, confirming that the ordered pair 3 comma negative 1 is indeed the solution to the system of equations. In this example, the coefficients of the y variable in the two equations were opposites and immediately cancelled out when added. But what if you don't see a variable that can be eliminated right away when you add the equations? In this example, adding the two equations will not eliminate either the x or y variable. So, what can you do in such a situation? We can multiply the first equation by a constant to make the coefficients of either variable opposites. But before that, we need to decide which variable to eliminate, either x or y. Let's eliminate the x variable. Since the coefficient of x in the second equation is positive 3, we want the coefficient of x in the first equation to be negative 3, so that they cancel out when we add them. To do this, multiply the first equation by 3. Note that as long as you multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, the equation's equality remains unchanged. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. 3 multiplied by 2y is 6y. And 3 times 5 is 15. Now the coefficients of the x terms are opposites. If we had chosen to eliminate y, we could make the coefficients of y opposites by multiplying the first equation by 2. This would result in 4y in the first equation which would cancel out with the negative 4y in the second equation when you add them. Regardless of which variable you initially choose to eliminate, you will obtain the same answer in the end. The next step is to add these two equations. These cancel out. 6y plus negative 4y is 2y. 15 minus 23 equals negative 8. To isolate y, divide both sides of the equation by 2, and you get y equal to negative 4. The next step is to find the value of x by substituting this value of y into one of the original equations. Let's substitute it into the first equation. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Then add 8 to both sides of the equation. Cancel out these. 5 plus 8 equals 13. If you multiply both sides by negative 1, you get x equals negative 13. Therefore, the solution to this system of equations as a coordinate pair is negative 13, negative 4. In this example, 
we were able to make the coefficients of one of the variables to be opposites by multiplying only one of the equations by a constant. However, in the next example, it doesn't appear that we can make the coefficients of one of the variables opposites by multiplying just one of the equations. This is because there is no integer by which you can multiply 11 to get negative 7, or by which you can multiply 7 to get negative 11, since 11 and 7 are not multiples of each other. The same goes for 8 and 6. So instead, we need to multiply both equations by different constants. First, let's decide which variable to eliminate. Let's eliminate the y variable. Because the least common multiple of 8 and 6 is 24, we can make the coefficients of y opposites by multiplying the first equation by 3 and the second equation by negative 4. This way, we will have 24y in the first equation and negative 24y in the second equation. And when we add them, they will cancel each other out. So, let's do that. 3 multiplied by 11x is 33x. 3 multiplied by 8y is 24y. And 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. For the second equation, negative 4 times 7x is negative 28x. Negative 4 times 6y is negative 24y. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Now that the coefficients of the y terms are opposites, the next step is to add these two equations. Cancel out these. 33x plus negative 28x is 5x. Negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. Now, if you divide both sides of the equation by 5, you get x equals negative 2. Next, calculate the value of y by substituting this value of x into one of the original equations. Let's use the second equation. Replace x with negative 2. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Then, add 14 to both sides of the equation. On the left side, these cancel out, leaving us with 6y. On the right side, negative 2 plus 14 equals 12. Now, isolate y by dividing both sides by 6. So, y equals 2. As an ordered pair, you can write the solution as negative 2, comma 2. In this example, and in the previous two examples, both equations in the system were given in standard form, so the x, y and constant terms of the two equations were aligned, making it convenient to add the equations together. However, in the next example, the second equation is not in standard form. So, our first step will be to rewrite the second equation in standard form to align its terms with the first equation. To do that, subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. Cancel these, and we get negative 5x plus y equals negative 17. Now, this equation is in standard form, and the corresponding terms in the two equations are aligned. The next step is to decide which variable to eliminate. Which one do you suggest eliminating, x or y? If you choose to eliminate x, you need to multiply both equations by different constants to make the coefficients of x opposites. Because the least common multiple of 4 and 5 is 20, you can multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by negative 4. However, if you decide to eliminate y, you only need to multiply the second equation by negative 3 to make the coefficients of y opposites. This requires less work compared to eliminating x. So, let's proceed with eliminating y. Negative 3 times negative 5x is positive 15x. Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. And negative 3 times negative 17 is positive 51. Now, the coefficients of the y terms are opposites. Next, add the two equations. Cancel out these. Negative 4x plus 15x is 11x. And negative 7 plus 51 is 44. Now divide both sides by 11 and you get x equals 4. Next, plug in this value of x into the second equation to calculate the value of y. 5 times 4 is 20 and 20 minus 17 is 3. Therefore, the solution to this example is 4 comma 3. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you found this video helpful so far. In the next example, the system of equations includes fractions. In such a case, 
the first step is to clear away the fractions in each equation. So let's do that. To remove fractions from an equation, we multiply both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominators of all the fractions in the equation. For the first equation, the least common multiple of the denominators is 6, right? So, multiply both sides of the first equation by 6. On the left side, distribute the 6. 6 multiplied by 5 over 2x is 15x. Because 6 times 5 is 30, and 30 divided by 2 is 15. 6 multiplied by 2 thirds y is 4y. On the right side, 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. For the second equation, the least common multiple of the denominators is 15. So, multiply both sides of the second equation by 15. 15 times negative x is negative 15x. 15 times 1 fifth y is 3y. And 15 times negative 2 thirds is negative 10. Now, there are no more fractions. And luckily, the coefficients of the x terms are opposites, so we can eliminate x right away. 4y plus 3y is 7y, and negative 18 plus negative 10 is negative 28. To isolate y, divide both sides by 7, and you get y equals negative 4. The next step is to find the value of x. If you want to avoid working with fractions and simplify the calculation, substitute this value of y into one of these equations with cleared fractions rather than one of the original equations. Let's substitute it into the first equation. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Then, add 16 to both sides of the equation. These cancel out, and negative 18 plus 16 is negative 2. Now, if you divide both sides of the equation by 15, you get x equals negative 2 over 15. Therefore, this is the solution to the system as an ordered pair. So far, we have solved systems of equations with exactly one solution. In the next two examples, we will see two special cases, systems of equations with infinitely many solutions and those with no solution. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. As you can see, neither x nor y has opposite coefficients. However, if we multiply the first equation by 3, the coefficients of both variables become opposites. 3 times 7x is 21x. 3 times negative 2y is negative 6y. 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. Notice that not only are the coefficients of x and y opposites, but also the constants. So when we add these equations, everything cancels out, resulting in 0 equals 0, which is indeed true. This indicates that the system of equations has infinitely many solutions, meaning there are an infinite number of ordered pairs that satisfy both equations simultaneously. If you were to plot the graphs of these two equations, the lines would perfectly coincide, indicating that any point on the lines satisfies both equations. So, when you solve a system of equations and end up with a number equal to itself, as in this example, the answer is infinitely many solutions. Finally, let's consider the case where the system of equations has no solution. In this example, the second equation involves fractions and is not in standard form. What would you suggest doing first? We need to clear the fractions and then rewrite it in standard form, right? To clear the fractions, multiply both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominators. The LCM of 2 and 4 is 4 right? So, multiply both sides by 4. 4 times y is 4y. On the right side, distribute the 4. 4 times negative 3 halves x is equal to negative 6x. And 4 times 13 over 4 is 13. There are no fractions now, and our next step is to rewrite this equation in standard form. To do that, add 6x to both sides of the equation. Cancel out these, and you will have 6x plus 4y equals 13. Now, this equation is in standard form, and the corresponding terms in the two equations are aligned. But you can see that neither x nor y has opposite coefficients. However, if we multiply the first equation by 2, the coefficients of both variables become opposites. 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. 
2 times negative 2y is negative 4y. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now, you can see that the coefficients of both x and y are opposites, and when we add these equations, both variables get eliminated. When we add the constants, we get 3, and we are ending up with 0 equals 3, which is not true. This indicates that the system of equations has no solution, implying that there is no ordered pair that can satisfy both equations simultaneously. If you plot the graphs of these two equations, you will notice that the lines do not intersect. Instead, they are parallel lines. So, when you solve a system of equations and end up with numbers that are not equal to each other, as in this example, the answer is no solution. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.